Hello, wonderful wanderers of the internet. You know, new games are awfully fun to play. And usually, when I want to play a new game, I'll just wait it out for one of my big favorite series to have a new release. Like, you know, Pokemon, or Zelda, or Paper Mario, but not this one. But sometimes, you know, I get a little, little, little anxious, and I can't wait for the next big Nintendo title because there hasn't been a direct in so long, and I need a first price to get. But regardless, I search out a new developer to play games. And it just turns out that two of the games I've been playing recently are by developer Shinin Multimedia. The titles Fast RMX and The Tools for Nintendo Switch. Both these titles are very different genres, one being racing and one being a more of an adventure game. But I love them both to death, and today we're going to do a double review on Fast RMX and The Tourist, as well as do a little developer delve into Shinin Multimedia and see where they've been hiding all these years, and what their history might be hiding. Let's get started. Shinin Multimedia is a German game developer that was founded way back in July 1st, 1999. Wait, 1999? So they've been around for 20 years and I hadn't even heard of them? Well, what in the world have they been doing the past 20 years? Captain Blobor? My the P. Garfield's nightmare? This game looks like it might be my nightmare. Well, it seems that Shinin got its start by working on a variety of licensed children games. And the games are all meh at best, but I, they're fine for kids, I guess. They're at least not broken or anything. Just kind of dull, nothing special. But eventually, Shinin made their own original IP with Iridium 3D, which sounds like a 3DS title, but no, it's for the Game Boy Advance. And the gameplay for it is, uh, pretty gross. So I mean, it's got this weird 3D angle thing going on, which is kind of cool, but it makes it near impossible to see where these bullets are, and it makes it really hard to dodge them. So in the sequel though, they fixed this, and they changed the angle, and called the game Iridium 2, so it wouldn't be this 3D shmup. And everything was good. So from this point on, we got a couple more licensed games, some shmups, the sequel to Maya the Bee that everybody was waiting for, a relaxing balanced puzzle game, a few sports titles, and at last, Fast RMX and The Tourist. So let's get on with the good stuff. Starting with Fast RMX, you may know this game as that one game that looks like F-Zero but isn't F-Zero because Nintendo doesn't want to make an F-Zero game. And it holds the elusive title of Nintendo Switch Launch Title, which only 12 games have. Yes, this game came out on March 7th, 2017, and was the go-to racing game on Switch for a whole month and a half until Mario Kart 8 inevitably swooped in and left it in the dust. But this game deserves better than that, because Fast Star Mex is one of the most beautiful and exciting games I've ever played on Switch. On booting up the game, you'll only be able to access a few of the many courses this game has to offer in the various modes. And one of the modes, Hero Mode, will be locked off completely, but we'll get back to that. First, there's Tournament Mode, where you can race in a variety of cups with three maps each, all with the same goal, get first place. Every time you beat a cup, not only will you unlock a new cup to race in, but a new vehicle as well. And picking your vehicle is essential to your success, as each one has four unique stats, boost, acceleration, top speed, and weight. The latter three are all pretty self-explanatory. I mean, acceleration, that's how fast you can speed up, Top speed, that's how fast you can get, and weight, that's how much you can hold your ground against other racers. The more complicated one is the boost stat, which determines two different things, your boost top speed and your boost acceleration. Essentially, a better boost stat means your boost is more effective at speeding you up. But enough technical mumbo jumbo, let's get to racing. So what makes Fast RMX unique and not just another racing game? Well, I'd have to say it's the incredible sense of speed that it gives you as a player, and the game's emphasis on never slowing down. And okay, I know that sounds pretty standard, right? Like, who'd want to slow down in a racing game? But give me some time, and I'll prove my point. So first, we've got the boost meter, which you fill up with these little glowing balls that are scattered all around the course. But more interesting are these strips of orange or blue that give you a boost when you drive over them. But you can only get the boost if your ship has the same color. Yes, with the simple press of the X button, you can phase shift and turn your ship from blue to orange or orange to blue. 
This one little mechanic makes the game significantly more interesting, as you'll not only have to navigate all these tight turns and hit the boost panels and avoid crashing, but you'll also have to manage your ship's color to make sure that you get the maximum boost. And these little color panels even appear on jumps. And if you end up with the wrong color when you go off one of these jumps, yeah, that'll happen. And speaking of jumps, this game's courses have a ton of them. Many tracks will just suddenly disappear beneath your feet, leaving you with only a moment to correct yourself so you don't careen off the course. As you progress through the game, it'll keep adding different obstacles for you to avoid. The courses will open up and there will be less guardrails, making it more difficult to stay on the track and more risky to boost as you might fly off and crash. The game will slowly put the boost panels closer and closer to each other so you have to react super fast with your phase shift. And all these things put together just make a super smooth difficulty curve that feels great to master. But you may want to pick a slower car as you try out new courses just so you can get used to the course layouts. Or you might have a lot of this happen. But eventually you'll overcome all these trials, and you'll beat the Subsonic Lead, and unlock Hypersonic, and you may even get to Supersonic. And it'll definitely be worth your time to make the climb, because unlike, say, Mario Kart, where each difficulty just gets a little more, well, difficult with computer levels, in Fast Racing RMX, the game actually gets faster as you increase in CC. Kinda like how Mario Kart has 200 CC, except it's spread out throughout the whole game instead of just being a huge jump at the end. And it's actually playable. The other main mode in this game is more reminiscent of F-Zero, and it's the aforementioned Hero Mode. To unlock it, you'll just have to beat a course in any of the different cups, and you'll unlock it in that respective cup. But now, you'll have to play the race with special rules. The three rules are, if you crash, it's an automatic game over. Your boost is now also your health bar, and when your boost bar hits zero, your ship will explode, meaning it's game over. This mode really tests your skills, as you can no longer rely on your boost, and you have a new mechanic that you have to keep an eye on as you fly through the course. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned one of my favorite things, this game's beautiful visuals. So the game may be flying by, but the rain effects, the fog effects, and the overall just interesting environments to look at make this game a joy to the eye. Also, the music that you've been hearing this whole time is bopping. So, quick stray thoughts to wrap things up. So, we have the comms in the game, which are actually really interesting because they're a little different than a lot of racers I've played. Because the CPUs are way more balanced and spread out in the placement. Essentially, instead of one CPU getting first in every race, the points are more spread out, meaning you have a chance to make a comeback. So, if you're looking for an F-Zero-like game, or just another fast racer or beautiful game to play on your Switch that's really intense and exciting, Fast RMX will definitely fill that void. <sighs> Well, that's enough high-speed racing for me. I think I need to kick it back and relax a little bit with the island life of the tourist. The tourist caught my eye immediately when it was revealed back in one of those Nindy Directs. With its gorgeous voxel visuals and lightings, it really made me want to explore every nook and cranny of the island. And I avoided most info on the game so I could enjoy it as much as possible. And oh boy, am I glad I did. So I thought I was simply going to have to go to one island, explore it, but when I booted up the game, much to my delight, there were many islands to explore, hiding all kinds of secrets. So The Tourist is an adventure game, where you play as this guy, who probably looks like your dad when he goes on a vacation. And your goal is to travel from island to island to find the secret behind these ancient ruins called monuments. In your journey, you'll come across many colorful characters who have all kinds of minigames and tasks for you to play which vary from things as interesting as scuba diving to runes in the bottom of an ocean to something simple like uh, doing an intense amount of push-ups in a short amount of time. Some of these tasks will be mandatory for the story progression, but a lot of them are optional and will just give you the game's currency, coins, which you can spend on a variety of things. The most interesting thing being these guidebooks, which will teach you a new technique. From being able to grab a ledge to a speedy dash technique, these little abilities mix up the gameplay in simple ways that are used to wonderfully explore the world. Also, you need your precious coins for tour pamphlets that allow you to open up new islands to explore. You don't need to always explore every nook and cranny of the island to move along the critical path, as it's usually pretty easy to find it early on, but I found myself wanting to do as much as I could since the side quests offered up all kinds of unique gameplay and minigames and usually had good rewards. 
So this game is essentially broken up into two large chunks. You have the island exploration chunk, which I was just talking about with all the side quests and collecting of key items. And then you have the monument exploration chunk. So as you explore an island, you'll usually get a new ability, and that new ability will allow you to discover a secret entrance into one of the monuments. In these monuments, the game will suddenly shift its focus from being exploration focused to puzzle focused, as you're tasked with using your new ability to solve a variety of puzzles that will slowly build on each other and become increasingly difficult as you go on throughout the monument. Kind of like a mini Zelda dungeon, except you start with the dungeon item at the beginning. Each one of these monuments will be capped with an exciting boss fight that's the culmination of all the puzzles you've learned in the monument so far. I love this game from start to finish, and if I have any complaint about it, it's that it ends too soon. Quick light spoiler alert here. Alright, just when the game is ramping up and building up to its conclusion, it just suddenly ends, and without much payoff at all. Because of this, this is one of those games that I definitely recommend going for all the secrets and 100% in the game so you can feel like you got the whole experience. And it only took me about 8 hours to fully complete this game and I wasn't really particularly trying. So I would highly recommend checking this game out if you enjoy adventure games or this voxel kind of art style, or if you just want a laid back game that's not Animal Crossing. I'm truly amazed that Shin was able to pull off these two incredible titles in genres that they're not even used to working in. I mean, usually Shinnin just makes shmups or jump and run games, but nowadays Shinnin really has come into their own as a developer and no longer makes uh, some of those uh, less desirable things. <laughs> and whether you're looking for a laid back adventure or a fast paced racing game, Shinnin Multimedia's got something for you. Don't mind me, I'm gonna get back to racing! <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I always enjoy making these videos. If you want some other content of mine, I got some episodes of Seer Lucian where we go over the series evolution of a couple different series like Luigi's Mansion and Kirby and Mother. So if that sounds like your thing and you haven't seen it yet, go give it a watch. And uh, yeah, hope your day is going good and uh, you're all beautiful people. Okay, goodbye.